Okay, welcome to lesson 4.3. You've now worked with nets quite a bit, so you should be familiar with the front, back, left, right, top, bottom, and you should realize for the prisms that these are all in pairs. So your first job is going to be able to create your own rectangular prism. I want you just to create one. I've given you some dot paper, so what I'd like you to do on the dot paper is to make sure that your total width does not exceed 14 and your total length does not exceed 22, because if you do that, you have a hard time making sure it'll fit on your, your uh, uh, on top of your, your dot paper. So I'd like you to take and create that and cut it out and then I want you to transfer it. Now this thing here says to double its size but I'm not going to have you double it. I just want you to transfer it onto the uh, onto the manila tag that I've given you and basically trace it in place and then cut it out. Don't fold it. Just sort of um, if you want to fold it, you can fold it, but don't tape it together because we're going to be using this as a learning uh, tool in a second. So create that for me and then transfer it onto the, the manila tag. Uh, you can crease the folds, but then stop before and do not tape it together. So pause the recording and do that. Okay, so now that you know you've got your basic rectangular prism and it's flat out, you can see all the sides. You take a look at how uh, we're going to do our calculations. We're going to be working with all of the shapes that you have there, and even notice you'll know they're all rectangles. There's no triangles here because we didn't do a pyramid. Cylinders will involve circles and stuff, but for this one, it's all rectangles. So how do you find the area of a rectangle? Well, a quick review. You put down the formula, area is equal to LW. Some people prefer to view area is equal to length times width. That's fine as long as you realize that the X is not a variable. Then you take and do your substitution, put in your length, put in your width, and then of course 6 times 4 is 24, and your units are centimeters squared because we're working in centimeters. That's how you find the area of a rectangle, which is 6 by 4. Now yours won't be 6 by 4. On the manila tag that you have, you have a bunch of rectangles. What I want you to do on every one of those rectangles is I want you to calculate the area for that rectangle. That's why I wanted you not to fold it up and tape it together. Keep it laying flat. So the total area, once you've got them all together, is going to be the sum of all the sides. Or all the faces, I guess we should use that term. So what I want you to do is to pause the recording. I want you to take your, cal your, uh, your, um, your net, calculate the area of every face using these three steps on every face. So you're going to do this six times one for each face. Once that's done, tape it together, put the calculations on the outside please, and then I want you to give it to a friend and have them actually double check your work while you check their work. So pause and make this happen. All right, so hopefully you and your uh, classmate agreed, and I'm hoping that you checked theirs and it was perfect and uh, they checked yours and it was perfect. Please don't uh, argue about little tiny 0.5s and 0.3s. As long as he's got the rough idea, it should be good. You know, rough, the good answers. So there, they, what I want you to then to do now is we're going to go into one I give you. It's called Captic the Surface Area of Rectangular Prism. Now I'm actually going to give you one. Now this is a prism, 2 by 4 by 8. And uh, we're going to take a look at this and calculate the, uh, the surface area of it. Now, in your calculations on your net, you should have noticed something. When you're doing your calculations, you should have found that the left side and the right side were the same. You should have found that the top and the bottom were the same. And you should have found that the front and the back were the same. Since these are actually the same, there's no need to calculate this and then go ahead and redo it here. Just take the first calculation, multiply it by 2, and that will give you the area of your size. Same thing for front back and top bottom. So let's go to the next page. And you don't have the 248 diagram on your notes, but you can copy it in or you can just use mine here. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the area of the front back, left, right, and the top bottom. So we've got area is equal to length times width. This is a formula that you have to put in for every calculation. Formula, substitution, answer. Let's take a look at the front and the back. The front and the back are 4 by 8. So I've got area is equal to 8 by 4. Area 
is equal to 32. And of course, there's a front and a back, so that means this is 64. You don't have to put the units in. Now let's go to the right and the left. The right and the left sides, take a look at them. They're right here. Here's one of them. It's two wide and four long. So this area is going to be equal to 4 by 2, which is equal to 8. And of course, there's two of them. Double it. That gives you 16. And now we have to do the top and the bottom. If you take a look at the bottom here, it's this piece right there. It's eight long. Now, to get the side, you've got to go up here and remember that this side is the same as this one. So it's basically eight by two. So area is equal to eight by two. So your area is equal to 16. Double it gives you 32. Now, in order to do the final question, what is the surface area? You have to go, so total area is going to be equal to 64 plus 16 plus 32, what you did. And of course, your surface area actually is it's more of an SA than a, than a, a surface area, a, a total area, because we're doing surface areas. So if you take a look at that and do the calculations, you're going to find that when you add them all up, you get 112. And now, if this was in centimeters, it really didn't say it, so this is going to be referred to as units squared. If you're not told what the unit is, just put down the word unit. That's how you find the surface area of a box, basically, rectangular prism. So now, what can change? Well, sometimes you don't have one of the actual surfaces. For example, this is a paper bag. It's open on the top. Now, the bag is 20 centimeters tall. It's 10 centimeters wide. And it's 16 centimeters that way. Now, you have to take and do the front back sides and bottom. Now remember, the top and bottom over here, there is no top. So you're going to be not doubling this one. This one's going to be multiplied by one. You're going to keep it. This one gets doubled and this one gets doubled. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the recording and find the surface area of this paper bag. Okay, let's take a look at the actual answers now. The first one let's talk about is the front and back. The front and the back, this is 16 wide by 20 high. So it's 20 by 16. So your area is equal to length times width. It is a rectangle. And that is 20 by 16. So 20 by 16, yes, you can use your calculator, is 320. Double that because there's one on the front, one on the back. That's 640. Now let's go to the sides. Your sides are 10 by 20. So again, area is equal to length times width. Your area is equal to 20 by 10. Your area is equal to 200. There's one on the left, one on the right, so double it. This is 400. Now the bottom. Now you can't really see it, but the bottom basically looks like this. And the bottom is 16 wide by 10. So over here, Area is equal to length times width. Area is equal to 16 by 10. And of course, that gives us 160. Now, because there is no top, you do not double this. So, the final answer for this particular question, total surface area is going to be 640 plus 400 plus 160. And of course, when you add up these three numbers, you're going to get 1,200. And of course, we are now working in centimeters, so it's centimeters squared. So how am I going to mark this? Well, let's take a look. Grab my trusty red pen. Formula, substitution, answer, double it. Formula, substitution, answer, double it. Formula, substitution, answer, we don't double it. Over here, what you did, what you got. So you can see I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this particular one is worth 13 marks. So make sure you include every step. If you were to miss out on just not putting in the assignment, sorry, the, the formulas, you drop three marks right there. Okay, turn the page. Now, here we go. This is a child's block. It is 10 centimeters tall, 5 centimeters wide, and uh, sorry, 5 centimeters deep and 7 centimeters wide. So what I'd like you to do is to pause the recording, find the surface area, and let's see if you can get all 14 marks.
Okay, let's see how you did. First thing, front and back, got to put your formulas in. Area is equal to length times width. Now, take a look at your front and back. The front is 7, and its height is right here, which is the same as this. So it's 7 by 10. So that gives us an area of 70. Of course, there's one on the front, one on the back. That's 140. Now, the next one, sides here, 5 by 20. So, what's going on here? Just for a second here. Make sure, oh, it's not 20, it's 10. Yeah, my little flag went off and went, wait a minute. Let's double check this. This is not 20. All right. It is 5 by 10. There we go. That makes more sense. So your area is equal to 50. Now there are two of them. So multiply left side by 2, and you'll get the right side included. So that's 100. Now, this one here, there is, this was cut and pasted. So this is the bottom, and there is also a top here. All right, so let's take a look. Bottom is looking right here. Get this phrase up. There's your bottom, and uh, it's five by seven. Okay, so five by seven area is equal to length times width. Area is equal to seven by five. Your area is equal to thirty-five. There are two of them. That gives you seventy. Now we have to find the total surface area. And again, it's what you did, what you got. So your surface area is going to be the sum of 140 plus 100 plus 70. So your surface area, when you add these together, is going to be 310. And we are working in the unit of centimeters, so it is centimeters squared. Okay, go over it, review it, make sure you know how to do it. Um, there is a shortcut. You know that there is a formula coming up, but we're not going to do it because part of the stuff we have to do is be able to get you to understand how the pieces fit together. There is a shortcut, like I said, but we will be doing that later. For now, you have to do it this way. So let's get busy on the assignment. If you have any questions, come in and see me, and we will see you in the next lesson.